So I discussed my thoughts on Ryzen in my last video, but now it's important to discuss what AMD's next moves are after releasing the aforementioned desktop CPU family. Let me be clear that I will not be speaking of Vega, but more towards the CPU side of AMD's plans for the Zen architecture. From the get-go, AMD's plan of execution requires maintaining a continuous supply of product to a market that needs inventory to fulfill contracts to both computer makers and to do-it-yourself builders. Without the supply to execute, companies and consumers move to other vendors, aka Intel. Time is money. AMD has faced this problem numerous times. It's well known that AMD almost won a very large contract to supply Apple with the first gen Lano APUs, but ended up snubbed when Apple figured AMD wouldn't be able to provide the large supply in a timely manner. AMD was in a better financial position at that time, and now has even more at stake than in the past. It almost seems more pertinent to release Ryzen quad cores to consumers at a later time in order to first fulfill contracts to computer makers. I expect quad core Ryzen to make a big splash for OEMs wanting to ditch their lower end Intel machines for faster processors while pushing the four cores feature. The only caveat is motherboards will need motherboard graphics or dedicated graphics offsetting some of the cost savings of a purely CPU die, but AMD could convince many of these vendors to utilize dedicated graphics like the RX 460, only boosting AMD's financial success even further. Once AMD has made good on these initial OEM orders, they can focus on delivering quad-core Ryzen to everyone else. High-end 6 and 8-core Ryzen chips, however, I don't feel need this approach, since store-sold AMD machines tend to be more value-oriented, and computer makers are less likely to build expensive 8 and 6-core machines. Performance vendors like Alienware, CyberPC, and iBuyPower will be clawing for high-performance Ryzen chips, but the supply of them should be able to meet both their needs and that of consumers wanting to build new machines. Now, the Zen architecture is designed for pretty much every market x86 has a major hand in, with the desktop market being the first to experience AMD's computational savior. Like with the desktop, the server market has been ignored to the same degree by AMD, hence it will be AMD's next real target. Desktop designs can be directly translated to the server, sometimes without any changes to the underlying chip layout, perhaps either a slight change in manufacturing process to optimize efficiency, or AMD could forego that entirely to just release the best binnings of Ryzen to the low mid-range server market as quick as possible. While Ryzen will be available in up to octa-core flavors, AMD is fixing to release server variants of Zen with up to 32 cores, and this is to directly fight Intel's 24-core monsters, and like Ryzen, probably at an undercutting price. The inner core communication fabric AMD described for Ryzen will no doubtably be put to excellent use in this regard. Like Ryzen, they will be using DDR4 memory, and perhaps 16-core and 32-core server products will move beyond just quad-channel DDR4 interfaces. AMD needs the server market. It is highly lucrative when a customer needs to fit out either a large or small server with expensive yet necessary many core processors, providing a major source of revenue to keep AMD afloat and to finance future projects. In a very related manner, AMD does have a 16-core server APU in the works, with no telling how many stream processors, but my guess is probably in the 2000 plus range. Said chip will be excellent for scientific computing, stream processing, and perhaps some graphics related industries, especially if AMD finally brings high bandwidth memory to APUs. Speaking of which, brings me to my next topic. AMD has already teased consumers about their next generation desktop and mobile APU called Raven Ridge, bringing the next real bump in performance for AMD APUs. Rumors point to Raven Ridge sporting 4 Zen cores, 1024 Vega based stream processors, and the big kicker, onboard high bandwidth memory for top end models. It's been a long time coming, but finally we'll see real current gen console class performance on a single SoC. It won't graphically compete with the PS4 Pro or upcoming Xbox Scorpio, but it will meet or exceed the PS4's graphical capabilities as long as it has HBM to provide the necessary bandwidth. But if Vega meets the hype and AMD makes some major improvements in GPU clock, Raven Ridge could actually sit right between the PS4 and PS4 Pro in terms of graphical capability, which would be pretty sweet whether in a desktop or laptop form. Bare minimum, Raven Ridge will at least double the performance of Kaveri and its successors, if not quadruple when factoring all the advances it will feature. 
Lower end bend variants lacking one of the Zen cores, compute units, and high bandwidth memory will still likely exceed Kaveri by a very significant margin and fight lower forms of Intel's i3s with superior graphics and hopefully competitive CPU performance. As shown in the latest revealings, Ryzen groups the Zen CPU cores into quads that they call core complexes, aka CCXs, that integrate the cores, L2 and L3 caches, almost like a graphical compute unit. It's not clear if the CCX can still function if one of the processors is disabled or defective from manufacturing. While Zen architecture on Ryzen, new server products, and even Ravenridge will all likely be designed around the CCX, Zen was also designed to retire Jaguar and its successors. Hence, I expect AMD to design a dual-core Zen APU variant to inherit Jaguar's market and take on the Atom-derived crop of Intel Pentiums found in all those cheap, crappy desktops and laptops. In concert, I'd expect it to use a single DDR4 memory channel and be equipped with a light load of Vega stream processors, probably just 256 or at best 384. All this would bring Core i3-like performance to a market segment that desperately needs drastic improvement. So there's no telling how AMD will tackle their next objectives. While I said I wouldn't talk about Vega, it seems Vega will be AMD's next real waypoint on their march back to industry competitiveness after they release Ryzen. I've been pondering this all day and I'd like to hear what you guys think, so make sure to comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. So thanks for watching guys, I will talk to you guys later on.